new videos every day. Life, wisdom, psyche truth, massage. Hello, thank you for tuning in today. My name is Mira Hoffman, and today I'm gonna to be showing you some techniques to help open up the shoulders and neck. Maybe you have frozen shoulder or just neck pain or neck tension, shoulder pain. These are gonna be some great techniques that you can use in your practice or have a friend work on you and try and open up those areas. So when you have frozen shoulder, and um, basically your shoulder has decreased mobility um, and you're not able to use it as much um, as you should or could. So there's several different causes of frozen shoulder and there's the muscles that are on the top of the shoulders and the back and the sides and then also underneath the shoulders you have a muscle called subscapularis that comes underneath the scapula, the shoulder blade that can get really tight and there's a lot of different causes of it. It can be just typical overuse or overwork you sit at a computer desk and type a lot or maybe you use your hands a lot doing some other sort of craft at a desk so whether it's that or related to some sort of sports injury or sports activity um, these techniques will help with those issues so right now I'm working on Cindy and I'm just starting to open up the back I'm just saying hello and kind of getting acclimated so she has a good feel for the pressure and also so I have an idea of how her musculature responds to massage. So I'm kind of just palming down either side of the spine, working on the most meaty parts, the erectors, the muscles that run along the spine. They're also called the paraspinal muscles. I'm working all the way down to the sacrum, the hip bones, and then back up to the top of the neck and out the shoulders. And as I work, I'm feeling for any areas of tension, looking to see if there's any knots. And those areas where the fascia is kind of bound up. And also any muscles that just feel wiry or tense. And giving those a little bit of extra work. Right now I'm using a nice broad pressure with the bottom of my palms and hands, but if I wanted to get a little bit more specific pressure, I could use my thumbs. So I'm noticing on Cindy right here at the top of the shoulders, there's a little bit of tension and kind of feels like a little bit of pebbles or stringy kind of grainy things. Some people it feels like rock. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a tense muscle and the bone. You can always just ask your partner, you know, hey, does that feel good? Do you want more pressure? Do you want less? Maybe I'm not quite on that area that you want to be worked. And they can help kind of guide you and direct you towards that area. So right now I'm kind of just using my thumbs to work up and down the length of the levator scapula. I'm using a cross fiber or cross fiber friction technique. And basically, if you think of the fibers of the muscle running from the top of the shoulder blade up into the neck, I'm working against that grain. So I'm working at a 90 degree angle from that. Cindy, so how's this pressure feel so far? Uh, maybe a little lighter. A little bit less, okay. So I tend to like deep work, so I work pretty deep. And some people don't enjoy that as much, or sometimes if they have a lot of tension and tenderness, it doesn't feel good, and the muscle needs a little bit of a lighter touch. Um, another option too is to come in back to that more broad stroke, so using the heel of your hands and the palms to engage a broader area. So I pretty much did a good job opening up the top of that shoulder area. Now we're gonna come in between the shoulder blades. So in between your shoulder blades, the major muscles there are your rhomboids. You have rhomboid major and minor, and they kind of look like a wing pattern or a triangle. They come from the spine and extend down into the edge of the shoulder blades. So Cindy's edge of her shoulder blades are here. So the muscles run like this, just like that, little fibers. 
In addition to that, you have the trapezius or the traps. And that's another triangle related muscle. And sometimes when you have a bunch of different muscles running on top of each other, um, those junctures where they are trying to slide past or underneath each other can get kind of tangled. The fascia can grow up in between those fibers and bind everything together. So we're looking to kind of just loosen that area, loosen the muscles, and also um, deal with or get rid of any areas where the fascia has grown in between the muscles and is uh, unproductive growth. So now I'm kind of working into the edge of the shoulder blades here. Just getting those atten getting the tension and those attachments worked out. You can see her shoulders and skin are starting to respond to the massage. We're getting some nice flushing here, which means that the um, circulation is increasing. The blood vessels are bringing fresh um, nutrients and oxygen into the area and also carrying away any metabolic waste or any toxins that she has stored in those muscles. Also means that the muscles are starting to release and relax thereby letting the blood come in. And so I'm gonna to continue to work out to that bottom edge of her shoulder blades, which comes down to here. And the next area that you can work is you can actually come on top of the shoulder blades. So these you have your rotator cuff muscles, your teres muscles, teres minor, major and you have supraspinatus and infraspinatus so there's a spinous process on your there's a spinous process on your shoulder blade here so supraspinatus supra means above so the muscle right in here and infra means underneath so underneath these little muscles in here all help rotate the shoulder and be, can be, become bound or locked up giving you that frozen shoulder, or locked shoulder, decrease in mobility in the shoulder blade. So just kind of kneading out the length of those muscles. And Terry's comes out underneath the ball of the shoulder, connecting into the arm. I'm just doing a nice Circular compression pattern, kneading and walking. Is that a little ticklish? <laughs> so some people may be ticklish, that's common. Um, sometimes it's just because it's a natural spot that can be ticklish or because they have tension there. So if that's the case, maybe switching to use a broader surface so it's not eliciting that response or creating more tension in that area. Just walking out the arm. And again, you can see her muscles are starting to respond. We're getting some nice redness and some flushing, increasing circulation in that area. The other muscle that is involved with frozen shoulder, another one is subscapularis. So you think of sub meaning under, under and scapula, your scapula, your shoulder blade. So a great way to contact that is to actually bring the arm down into this nice neutral position. And I'm going to place my thumb underneath the shoulder blade here. So you can see my thumb kind of just disappears underneath there. How does that feel? Tender? Yeah, so she's saying it does feel tender. And this is a muscle that a lot of massage therapists don't get to. It's a little bit hard to access because it is so buried underneath the shoulder blade. But I find that people that have a lot of neck and shoulder pain or tension really benefit from having this muscle released. Right now, I am working on it from the backside, but there's also techniques that you can use to work on it from the front side on a table. So I'm just basically pressing my thumb up into the muscle, 
and letting it melt in or sink in. The mussels are kind of like playing with cornstarch. I don't know if y'all have ever done that. Where if you add cornstarch and water, if you try and press really quickly or really hard, you kind of just bounce off. The substance just gets really tense. But if you let your finger just gently touch it and melts in, slowly it'll move out of the way and let you in. So it's a good perspective to keep in mind when giving a massage to anyone. Maybe they do need some deep work, but just take more time to get there. Give their body time to relax into it. So we worked on the rhomboids before, but another great way to work on the rhomboids is actually bringing the arm back behind um, the client's body. And you can already see how this is starting to pop up the edge of the shoulder blade. And if I push here, I can already start to work underneath that edge. Um, if you look compared to this side, how her shoulders is very nice and round, there's not much of an edge to, to get underneath. So there's a couple ways if you're a massage therapist that you can hold the arm. I like to just take the outside of my leg and place it against the client's forearm. That way I can use my outer arm to grab the shoulder, the front side of the shoulder, and then with my inner arm, I can use it to compress underneath the shoulder blade. So you can see my fingers are really sinking in quite a bit. It's a big shoulder opener. Cindy, feel free to let me know if any of this doesn't feel comfortable. So again, I'm just placing my fingers and then using my outer hand to retract the shoulder back. You can go all the way up the length of the shoulder blade there. And then I like to kind of just end by coming out over the top. And then we can bring the arm back down. So it's really good. Um, we've opened up all these back muscles to the back of the shoulder, but in order to balance out the body, we want to work on the front side of that shoulder girdle as well. So I'm just gonna lift and open up the front side of her body. You have the pec muscles coming in to attach into the shoulder here. And we're just gonna work on the outside of those muscles. I'm just gonna use my fingertips. And this time my outer arm, is to, turning into the point of pressure or focus. And then my inner arm is pressing from the back side of the shoulder to help roll and put pressure onto those muscles. So if you're working with a lady, definitely be cognizant. Make sure your hand doesn't go too low. You kind of just want to work right underneath the clavicle bone here so you can see it right there and just right in that most meaty part of the shoulder and the front of the pecs. And Cindy, you can let me know how does that feel? I think it feels fantastic. <laughs> so a lot of times our body works in a system of counterbalances and balances if you think of it like a scale. So in this side from the front of the body, if this is our line, all the back muscles are trying to support the shoulder from this side and all the front muscles, the pecs and stuff, are trying to support the shoulder from that side. So even though we've opened up all this, we want to make sure and open these guys up. That way her shoulder can sit in a more neutral position when she is done with the session. So again, I'm just doing that movement again. So I'm just gonna work the front side of her shoulder a little bit more, and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the, the knuckles, so the flat part of my hand here, and I'm just gonna bring it in, and then again, just pressing in and opening the shoulder. And coming out the arm. 
So those are some great techniques to open up the shoulder and the shoulder girdle. We can work a little bit more into the neck if we want to. You can also check out our other videos on massage. We have tons of videos working with neck pain and tension specifically, how to deal with headaches. We also have some on carpal tunnel and wrist pain. So feel free to browse the Psyche Truth channel. See if there's any other videos that call out to you if you want to find more information. And my name is Mira Hoffman. You can find out more about my chair massage practice at austinchairmassage.com. And go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know if you have any questions. How did Mira do that? How did she get her hand back behind her back like that? Or that looked a little awkward. Is there a variation that we can do for someone that has not as much mobility in their shoulder? Just feel free to let us know if you have any questions or comments. Go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel so we can share more great information with you. Thank you and have a beautiful day.